I rarely see this topic talked about. And as long as I'm spending this much time planning out precise toolpaths, I might as well complicate the matter and add complexity for complexity's sake. And maybe just start getting a few things completed on my bloated build list. Custom and compound radii, contoured slots, varied scalings, and unique inlay designs make these components challenging, and even more so when you combine tooling across multiple unique parts. Let's dig in and explore how to use a standard in production machining for custom one-off pieces in Fusion 360 and Mach 3. been concentrating on making complete build videos lately, and I find them much more satisfying for myself, and clearly, if the analytics can be trusted, you as well. From time to time, I'll slip in a video that can be produced more quickly, and with any luck, fill in the gaps between the videos that take a longer production schedule. As I look through my build list, I find it a bit longer than I ever expected. Some technical solutions come to mind, and that's what I'm talking about today. As it sits, I have 57 milling jobs to complete. My first idea was to set up a single job each day, and then it's all done in around two months. A simple solution, but I don't think it'll work. The list will continue to grow, and I will never bring it to a manageable point. The second concept, and the one we're exploring today, takes advantage of a core concept at the root of what makes these machines so useful in manufacturing environments. I generally utilize the CNC in a much more arts and crafts vein, but today we'll be looking at things from a production standpoint. Many of the parts on my list are custom, but there are more similarities than differences. When milling fretboards, the choices I make tend to be relatively repetitious. So let's see how many we can pile up and knock down today. I'm setting up parts in multiple work offsets or work coordinate systems in Fusion 360. Fusion lets us mill multiple setups, each as an offset, G54, G55, G56, and so on. It will save me a bit of time in that one tool will be used across four setups. There's a bit more complexity, but it shouldn't be too bad for fretboards that only require one-sided milling as well as similar tools and tool paths, but at the same time end up as one-off custom parts. The workflow is relatively simple. Well, it's not that simple at all, so I'll take that back. I'll do my best to describe what I've done here, and without a doubt, some of it will not come across very well. As usual, I will attempt to clarify in the comments below if you have any questions. I've created a new Fusion 360 project and inserted all four models into the new project. I arranged them and made only the relevant sketches and bodies visible. I created a setup for each fretboard and a set of toolpaths unique to each. I set the WCS offset for each setup to 1, 2, 3, and 4, which equate to the G54, G55, G56, and G57 offsets. I selected the operations that use the same tool or logically went together and post-processed them into G-code files. I plan to first cut the recess in the inlay in three of the fretboards, then cut the fretboard contour on the fourth and engrave the inlay design. This leaves all four ready for composite inlay. After the mother of pearl dust inlay is all set and cured, I can run the fretboard radius operation 
on the remaining three and finally cut the fret slots and outlines. This method is incredibly productive, and while it's also very stressful, I think that in time I will become better and better at it. And for the moment, it's the only way to dig out of the pit I put myself in. Wish me luck, and thanks for watching.